Ooh, about to turn 30,000. Oh, yeah. 29, 9, 99. Come on, switch. If you guys happen to watch the uh, 2019 Ducati World Premiere this past Sunday and uh, could look past the uh, odd PR people that Ducati had on stage, which included uh, a cameo by the Techno Viking. <laughs> And uh, this leggy Italian chick whose face looked like uh, she was up late the night before uh, yelling at her boyfriend. If you're willing to get past that, Ducati had a pretty good spread of new motorcycle products. There was a, a slight revamp uh, to the Scramble line, which included some, you know, some pretty cool new color schemes. I really like that uh, blue on silver of the Cafe Racer. It's sort of in the R9T vein. They also improved the uh, instrument display and added a new headlight. There was also the new 1260 XD Oval and XD Oval S, which uh, is putting out, I think, 159 horsepower now from the 1262 Testa Strada. It's the same engine from the Multistrada. And uh, even an electric mountain bike, which uh, kind of heralds back to Ducati's early days when they were, you know, strapping gas motors to bicycles. It seems like just about every major bicycle brand has an electric, you know, bicycle. Um, I know Trek and Specialize have them. There's also the High Bike, which is a really cool electric mountain bike. And I think BMW has one as well, which is probably what spurred on Ducati to build one. And most of these bikes work off like a pedal assist or like a torque multiplier approach, where the uh, electric motors essentially multiply the rider's pedal input by like, I think it's like two to 300%. So it's sort of like having three riders on a bike that don't weigh anything helping you pedal they do like i think they do like 28 miles an hour actually in california uh most of these bikes are banned from trails because they're classified as i think it's like class three uh vehicles but without question i think the uh piece de la resistance or the chenet connon as they say in france was the new uh v4r and I'm going to do a comprehensive, you know, soup to nuts review of the bike, you know, from an engineer's perspective, including uh, an explanation of the wings and the uh, computational fluid dynamics analysis they presented. And I'm also going to do a, a horsepower and torque curve comparison between the V4R and V4. Now, Ducati didn't present a V4R torque curve, but I was able to calculate one based on the limited info Ducati did present. So uh, stay tuned. Just throw a random fry in the middle. Oh, who's faster? That was good. This is Tuna Canyon Road straight ahead. Everyone talks about it. It's a really cool road. It turns into one lane, some really beautiful scenic stuff as you wind down towards Malibu Beach. But this actually goes to Stunt Road, and also another popular riding destination. What was it that uh, Mark Twain said? It's not progress I'm afraid of, it's change. And I don't know, I think the uh, V4R is a, a welcome change. I wasn't, you know, com completely thrilled with the V4's looks when it debuted last year. But I think they did a great job with, you know, this revision of their, you know, first V4-powered R Edition Super Sport bike. So, the basic V4R line card. New swing arm, new subframe, a new all-carbon fiber composite bodywork, which comes in red or uh, a naked black, which is Mmm, pretty sexy. Mm -hmm. The bike is uh, three inches wider at the front and weighs, I think it's 378 pounds dry, which is uh, like, I think it's 6.6 .6 pounds lighter than the uh, standard V4. race trim I think the V4R is a dry weight of uh, 364 pounds as a point of reference the uh, 1199 powered uh, Panigale R the 2017 um, I think that weighed 357 pounds dry so Ducati essentially stroked the V4's 90 degree 1101 Stradale engine by uh, 5 millimeters or 0.2 inches 
to, uh, I think it's 998 cc. And it's rated at 221 horsepower at 15,250 RPM uh, with a red line. I think it's like 16,500, which is seven horsepower more than the standard V4's 214 horsepower. In a kitted uh, Kropovich trim, the V4R puts out 234 horsepower, which is uh, eight more horsepower than the Speciale or a kitted standard V4. But just remember, this is rated in metric horsepower, so in Imperial or SAA units, it'll be closer to you know 231 horsepower, um, which is you know still a ton of power. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, in like the next two years. You know, super sport leader bikes are going to be putting out like 250 horsepower. So the V4R engine gets uh, newly designed forged aluminum pistons and uh, titanium connecting rods, which are 100 grams or 0.22 pounds lighter than the steel connecting rods they replace. So that's almost a pound right there, just in sprung weight. And obviously, it has a lower rotary inertia, so the motor can spin up faster into higher RPMs. They've also lightened the R's uh, forged steel crank by about 2.4 pounds. Uh, it also gets a new cam, uh, bigger inlets and throttle bodies, and a, a lighter oil pump assembly. Now, if you notice, Ducati did not uh, present a torque curve comparison between the V4R and V4. And the power curve comparison they did present had no vertical axis horsepower values. And if you looked at the horizontal axis, the RPM tick marks were all wacky which made it harder for me to transpose the data. And to be fair, I think Ducati is, is getting savvy to guys like me taking their data and manipulating the results. So, you know, they try to make it tamper-proof, which, you know, I totally understand. In any case, I was able to transpose those power curves. And uh, I found that the two curves were actually on different scales. So I had to correct the data, which kind of squashes the curves together a bit. In any case, it's pretty apparent what giving up 100cc does to the V4R. For much of the rev range, say up to like 12,000 RPM, the standard V4 puts out an average of about, I think it's 10 horsepower more than the V4R, with a, a peak 20 horsepower differential at I think, I think it's 7,500 RPM. That's a lot, but remember the V4 peaks at around 13,000 RPM with a 14,500 RPM red line. Well, the V4R continues to pull all the way up to, you know, its peak at 15,250 RPM and continues going to its 16,500 RPM red line. Now, in terms of torque, I was able to use the power data to calculate the torque curves for both engines. And again, if you look at the curves, there's nothing really shocking here. With a 100cc deficit, the uh, V4R gives up some, uh, some serious carry-ons to the uh, standard V4. It's an average of uh, eight foot-pounds over the full rev range with a peak difference of, I think it's 12 foot-pounds occurring at, again, at 7,500 RPM. So all things being uh, equal in the driveline, the standard V4 would appear to have the edge over the V4R, you know, for all but the long straights where the R's, you know, insane top end can can be utilized. But you have to figure, you know, with a higher red line, Ducati will probably use a larger final reduction to the rear wheel, so, you know, a bigger rear sprocket. So some of the torque loss to the standard V4 will, will just be a wash. So the takeaway, as far as the motor is concerned, is, you know, you're not missing a whole lot between a V4 versus a V4R, especially on the street. But the R is, uh, I don't think it's just an engine store. I think there's a, a whole bunch more cool stuff that Ducati packed into this thing. More coppers. Oh, yeah. They're friggin' everywhere. Making double overtime.